Hi Libra, this is Logan with Golden Thread Tarot. This is going to be your monthly reading for January 2024. I can't believe that I'm already saying this, but yes, we are in 2024. And if you are in December, welcome to the future. And if you are in January, welcome to the present. As usual, we light the Palo Santo to cleanse the space. So it's just us and the message. Of course, I hope that you had a lovely holiday, whatever you celebrated, and that you are ready for 2024. And 2024 has the number eight. We are a number eight year. Libra. We cleanse the space for Libra. Third eye chakra is definitely very active this month. As is your sacral. Okay. Third eye and sacral chakra for you. So... This month, I would focus on your third eye, right? Which resonates with the color purple or a dark blue, right? Like a, di um, a dark royal blue, okay? And um, your sacral chakra resonates. That's two um, inches below the navel, navel. And that resonates with the color orange. Now, a third eye can talk about us really being in tune with our intuition this month, okay? We could be completely on point with our intuition, um, really trusting our moves, trusting where we are going next, trusting the plans that we have in place, okay? Because uh, it didn't feel blocked, it felt very active, which is beautiful. So you're seeing the plans um, of all of the um, energy that you put into them kind of coming to fruition, right? And this is beautiful, okay? You also have your sacral chakra being activated at this time. We could see the queen of wands up right here, okay? Or the ace of wands, right? Um, but this is uh, creativity. This is divine expression through dance, through art, through making pottery, through... Um, uh, it's really more so creativity using our hands and our bodies in some way, okay? And, um, you know, if you're looking for intimacy, you could see intimacy um, uh, in more abundance this month, okay? Which is always fun. So, sexy times ahead, okay? Let's go ahead and get into the archetype by Kim Krantz. This will be a general overview for what the month is going to be like. The nectar. Okay, this is in reverse. So um, we could see the queen of wands in reverse. So the nectar really talks about that juicy feeling um, inside of us that kind of keeps us going, right? It's that energy of, it's really like sex energy. Okay. Four, four, four. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything right now. You might, um, be wanting more of this. Okay. So that's why the sacral chakra is coming up where 
you really need to be expressing, okay, that creative energy, that sensual energy outwards, right? And maybe this is something that you've been feeling a little bit stifled. So great ways to get the sacral chakra because this is definitely heavy on the sacral chakra in reverse, right? Dancing, moving our hips, okay? Um, singing, even though that does the throat chakra, the throat chakra connects to all of the other ones too. So singing like sexy songs, okay? Singing sexy songs, maybe when you're alone or around other people. Um, do things that turn you on this month. Okay, do things that turn you on and just make you feel sexy, right? Maybe your outfits haven't been feeling as sexy, right? Maybe the clothing that you're wearing is like 555. Five, five. Maybe you're wearing like a little bit like a baggier clothing, right? So maybe like tighten it up a little bit to kind of feel like enhance your curves, right? Whether you're masculine or feminine, when you wear clothes that enhance your curves, okay, and the areas that you love, right? Like I love my neck. So I like to wear turtlenecks, right? Um, I love my arms. Um, so I like to show off the length of my arms. So um, I would recommend trying to boost your wardrobe this month in ways that make you feel really sexy, okay? That's going to be a big topic here this month. Like, yeah. Sex energy is going to be a big topic this month for you, Libra. Protection and completion. Archangel Michael and Archangel Azrael. So this month, just be aware that you are going to feel very protected and you're really going to be feeling as though you've completed some sort of cycle within yourself, okay? Now, this can go as literal as maybe you've put in a security system into your home, or maybe you have just um, kind of checked the locks in your house to make sure things are okay, or maybe you've done, this is, this is, this could be literal protection, or this could be, um, you just knowing that you are protected spiritually, okay? Now you could call on Archangel Michael to assist with this process, okay? He's definitely coming up for you this month is protection, but just know that regardless of what you're feeling this month, you are protected, okay? I'm hearing tell them about the coughing, something about you coughing okay a lot maybe you've had a problem coughing a lot that's not for everybody there are just some particulars right don't worry about the coughing i saw health on there too um you're going to find resolve regarding the coughing okay i don't know where that's coming from Queen of Wands upright as we're shuffling through. Three of Pentacles, Two of Wands, Five of Wands at the bottom of the deck. Three of Pentacles and Two of Wands. I mean, this is beautiful energy. This can go as surface level as things are just really working out for you this month, right? Things are really working out. You're feeling protected. You're feeling like you've completed something, okay? This could be in a scholarly manner, but this is 9-11. This definitely is just saying that you've put a lot of work in and you've set your sights on this um, cooperative and, and team-oriented situation and all of the benefits are reaping at this time. So especially regarding work, endeavors okay you are getting along really well with your co-workers you're seeing vision for your future okay you're feeling less stagnant all right you feel less like you're running around in circles and more like you're leading with a purpose okay leading with purpose no longer running in circles 
calm headed, calm headed. The Nine of Cups and the Page of Cups with the Eight of Wands. There's something that did not go the way that you would have expected it with the Nine of Swords, okay? The Nine of Swords and the Nine of Cups in reverse, all right? This is Nine Nine. This is that completion, right? This is a completion that we're talking about where Nine Nine is reaching you know, nine, 10, 10 is, is reaching the completion, but nine, nine is being aware of the fact that this is, um, no longer going to be happening. Okay. So something that you, for some of you, you're just in pain because you haven't received all of the things that you thought that you were receive that would bring you wish fulfillment, right? So all of these accomplishments, all of these um, potentials, right, didn't work out in the way that you thought that they were going to work out, okay? Um, for some of you, I'm picking up, you thought you were going to do hair and you're not going to do hair at this time, okay? Something about a hair salon not coming together, right? Something about a hair salon a dog groomer, right? If you want to do into dog grooming or something like that, very particular for some people here. Um, the name Edward is popping up for some reason. Alexis. So anyway, um, certain things regarding your wish fulfillment have not come to fruition. And that can cause some, you know, mental strife, right? But that's okay because we're protected and we are really seeing that the areas in which we are moving forward with are actually working out, okay? They are actually working out. And we do feel a sense of curiosity and a sense of love when it comes to, um, yeah, just offering ourselves up at this time, okay? We're not letting those past situations affect us. And even if there are some things that do creep up on us at night, it doesn't take over like it used to, okay? Now, Page of Cups can actually be someone that's coming towards you with love or you are going towards someone with love. But this is a very affectionate, romantic energy coming in for you this month, okay? So don't be afraid of accepting love and letting love in and don't let these past situations make you feel like for some reason you're not sexy okay you're gorgeous you're sexy you're beautiful and you're protected okay Seven of Swords in reverse. Now, the situation that you could be letting go of or having a tough time letting go of is one where someone maybe betrayed you, right? Maybe they cheated on you. Maybe they broke your heart. Maybe um, you just felt backstabbed by somebody in whatever way that they backstabbed you. And that can cause you to feel like your guard is up and your guard should be up, right? 1414, 14. your guard should be up. You don't wanna just let everybody in. So this is a month where you're really going to be able to discern and weed out good from the bad, right? Trustworthy versus untrustworthy. And you're really going to be able to, third eye, trust that intuition when it comes to any and all things coming your way this month, okay? King of Pentacles, okay? upright. This is boss energy. This is you feeling in charge of your finances. This is in, this is you feeling like you're in charge of your business endeavors. This is you feeling like 
a confident provider, whether you're the masculine or the feminine, okay? There's definitely, if you're the feminine, you're definitely in your masculine this month, okay? I'm feeling a lot of masculine energy in this reading, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? Um, we have a balance of masculine and feminine in our lives, and both of them come out at different times when they're needing to, right? So this month is definitely you getting your stuff together, okay? Things are working out, especially on the business front, okay? I'm seeing that money's going to be good this month, right? Money's going to be good, and um, things are working themselves out here, okay? Six of Swords with the King of Cups upright, dang, the Hierophant in the bottom of the deck. So we officially have two upright kings on the board right now, okay? Now the Six of Swords in reverse is talking about us still holding on to something that we know we should be letting go of, okay? This is going to be different for everybody, whether this is a job, right? This is a relationship, this is a family member, a friendship, etc., a way of being, a way of living, a way of thinking, but this goes in correspondence to that nine of swords regarding a wish fulfillment here, okay? So there's something that you thought that was going to provide you with wish fulfillment and it did not, all right? And in order for you to be as successful as possible, you need to be able to let this go. Let this go, okay? Because keeping a hold of those thought patterns and all of that heaviness regarding this situation is only going to hold you back. And this is a month where you definitely do not need to be held back, okay? Because we now have the King of Cups here with the King of Pentacles upright. Both of these guys are upright, right? So this is, um, regardless of the gender, right? There's a couple messages here. There might be a couple of, if you're single, there might be a couple of men coming in here. One of them has a lot of money, okay? One of them maybe owns their own business, right? Um, they could own their own business, right? They could you know, be into landscaping. They could be into landscaping. They could um, uh, work for a bank or something like that, right? Um, own their own restaurant, right? And they are coming through with an offer for you, okay? The other one may not have their own business, but they are really um, good at their emotions. They're emotionally secure, emotionally intelligent, emotionally available, and they're speaking to you in a way where you're like, wow, I can totally get behind that, right? So if you're single, you might, but again, you want to have super discernment, right? Because you don't want to go into old patterns that you used to do when you're picking a suitor, okay? If you are um, in a relationship, okay, your masculine is feeling really good this month, okay? They're feeling in control. They're feeling capable. They're feeling really in themselves, right? Um, yeah, this is good provider energy, emotionally available, all that kind of stuff, right? And if this is you, you're just feeling totally in control of your life right now and where it's going, okay? This is beautiful energy. Things are just working this month. So all I can say, things are just working, okay? And remember, Jupiter is in Taurus, right, which has to do with our finances, our sense of stability, a sense of security, especially in the home front and material possessions, right? Now, Jupiter went um, direct on December 30th, so Taurus placements, of course, will be feeling this the most, or Taurus risings, um, but uh, everyone will be feeling the effects of Jupiter um, going direct until, I believe, May 25th of this year. Three of Wands with the Page of Cups upright again. Okay. So now, Three of Wands with this Page of Cups upright again, we are seeing a vision, okay? We are seeing a vision. And if you're looking to court somebody, you might be putting your feelers out to someone in particular. And they are someone that you really can see a future with. You really can see a life with them. You see potential with them. I would say go for it because um, we've seen nothing but beautiful energy here and you know yourself enough and you know what you're looking for, okay? If you're already in a partnership, this is just saying that 
the next endeavor that you're going to be working on is going to be very successful and that you are so in tune with the vision that you have for the next thing that you're going to be working on and your heart is completely in it right you're just giving to this it's just something that you can't help but give into okay all right let's go ahead and get some from these decks We have make manifest and change your perspective. The nuthatch and the beaver. Beaver doesn't just sit around thinking. He plans, then executes, carefully damming up waterways to construct the ponds and swamplands where he builds his island home. And that home? It's a marvel of modern engineering with an underwater entrance, snug dry bedrooms, and plenty of storage for winter foodstuffs. Beaver knows how to fundamentally change landscapes, bringing water to barren areas. Call on Beaver when you are ready for foundational change, whether remaking an inner landscape or creating something new in the world at large. Beaver teaches us not only how to make manifest, moving from thought to reality, but how to plan for the future. Whatever you hope to accomplish, call on Beaver's medicine to help you go from idea to done. I'm also picking up that some of you are building your own home and in this process, you're really putting your heart and soul into this process and things are working out very well for that, okay? Create space for an altar. Creating an altar is an act of designating sacred, sacred, sacred space. It's a place for honoring meditation, reflection, for dreaming. Here's how to build yours. Find a place to build your altar. You can put an altar on top of the fridge or in a box under the bed. Don't get too precious about this. Use the fireplace mantle, a windowsill, a corner of your desk, or an old stump in the yard. You declaring this is sacred space makes it a sacred space. Clean your spot. Maybe that means soap and water. Or you want to cleanse it energetically by burning sage, cedar, mugwort, or your favorite incense. The idea is to create a blank canvas to which you can purposefully add things. The clearing off is also part of the consecration, the energetic act of turning something mundane like a tabletop into something sacred. Elemental symbols such as a candle for the fire, a bowl of water for water, a plant for earth, or a feather for air can be placed on your altar to represent the material stuff out of which everything is made. The elements also represent you. Earth is your body, air is your breath, water, emotion, and fire is spirit. Representing the elements on your altar brings you to this sacred space. What is sacred to you? The next step in creating your altar is to reflect on what's sacred to you right now, knowing this will change over time. Perhaps today you're thinking about your lineage. Your ancestors feel near and sacred. Next week, you might be working with animal medicine and using your altar as a place to reflect on that energy. Think of your altar as a workspace for your spiritual doings. What you put on your altar will depend on what you are currently working on spiritually. Remember, this space needs to be sacred to no one but you. Add things to your altar beginning on the eastern side and moving westward to honor the movement of the sun. You could also place items in a clockwise pattern to build energy or a counterclockwise pattern if the altar is meant to unwind an energy or situation. 
you might want to include a candle, statue, crystal, or bowl of water as a focal point for quiet reflection. Making an altar is a creative act, so feel into it. Finally, notice how you built your altar. Is it symmetrical or asymmetrical? Is it sparse or full? Simply use this information to gather about yourself and your current energy. No judgments. Cool. And we have the nut hatch. Up is down and down is up. To nut hatch, it really doesn't matter. This little bird has no trouble when life gets topsy turvy. A backward pointing toe lets this quirky friend walk down tree trunks while other birds can only climb up. Is Nuthatch simply being contrarian or is going against the grain serving some special purpose? Here's a hint. When you flip everything over, the world looks dramatically different. This allows Nuthatch to store his winter seed stash in plain sight for him, but to other birds, it's hidden by folds in the bark. Nuthatch reminds you to approach your usual problems from a different direction, a change of perspective makes all the difference. Find a new approach. Other birds, while hopping up a great tree's trunk, never notice Nuthatch's stash of seeds cleverly deposited in bark pockets that can be seen only when heading down. We often approach problems in our lives from one direction, but what happens if you flip the problem over or find a back door? Let's use the cards that come with this book to find out. Hold the cards in your hands and think of a problem, conflict, or issue you're currently working with. Set the intention to draw a card that will help you with an itch issue. Itch, itching, okay. Set the intention to draw a card that will help you approach this issue from a different angle so you can see both the issue and the solution in a new way. Shuffle or fan the cards with the backs facing you, no cheating, and draw whichever one feels right. Then ask yourself how the energy of the animal you are looking at can help with your particular issue. Does this animal give you a new way to approach your problem? I'm going to pull a card for you that can help you with this, whatever um, issue this is. Okay, could be work-related here. Um, something that you're having trouble with at work. Against the flow. There are patterns in all of our lives. Some of them are simple, like which side of the road to drive on, and others are more obscure, more felt than thought. Some of these patterns are social contracts that keep us safe. Others are habits with roots that have been lost in the twist and turns of time and culture. We tend to be reactive when someone goes against the grain. Think of the person who pushes backward against the crowd, goes up the goes up the down escalator and moves against the flow of pedestrian traffic in an airport. What thoughts cross your mind as you get out of the way? How do you treat people who go against the grain? Do you let yourself move against the flow? What's the difference between a rebel and an innovator? Innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. Steve Jobs. Okay, pretty powerful stuff. Definitely like working really hard on your vision. And I think you are someone who is extremely innovative and um, forward thinking and yeah, making things happen in unusual ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull a card that pertains to the particular problem that you're gonna be having this month, okay? So the particular issue that Libra is going to be having, okay, regarding what we just talked about, what is the best way for them to deal with their situation this month? You are worthy. Tabby Cat 135. I love this card. Twitching in the sunlight, Tabby Cat has
has ancestral dreams of savannas and sleeping in rocky crevices. A descendant of the wild ones, Tabby still bears the remnants of her stripes and spots, but she's pleased to have moved indoors. Adopting humans was a brilliant move. She purrs, stretching and kneading her paws. Tabby never wonders if she's earned the warm patch of sunlight by the window or the bit of tuna in her evening meal. She never doubts that she's worthy. Tabby licks a paw to smooth the fur behind her ear. You are already enough, she reminds you. Breathe into that knowing. Bathe your energy. In ancient Egypt, Cat was a representative of the goddess Bast, come to dwell in your home. She was family royalty. When a cat died, she was mummified and her humans shaved their eyebrows and mourned her until their eyebrows grew back. Her humans shaved their eyebrows. In ancient Celtic lands, Druids used cat medicine to help them slip between worlds. During the Spanish Inquisition, cats were seen as familiars magical avatars who assisted with sorcery. Cat is associated with divinity and magic because she keeps her energy attuned. You can keep your own energy field clear with regular cat baths. Close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, letting yourself settle into your skin. Using your hands, begin smoothing down your energy field a few inches out from your body. Not sure you believe that you have an energy field? That's okay. Go through the motions and notice what you feel. If you notice any spot that feels sticky or rough, pluck it out of your energy field and flick it away. Trust your hands and don't overthink it. Cat knows that keeping your energy field clean is an important step in cultivating a magical glow. Dependence and independence. Some say that domesticated cats, compared to their ancestors, are forever in the kitten stage, never learning to hunt or take care of themselves. Humans have become their surrogate mothers, taking care of all of their needs, but Tabby Cat's aura of self-sufficiency and independence seems at odds with this notion. Is it possible to be both independent and reliant on others? Can you be fully content with life while not in complete control. Mountain lion is the wild and full-grown cousin of cat. Mountain lion takes tabby cat's teachings up a notch, helping us grasp not only our own worth, but the worth of others to watch and observe in order to come to understanding and to move through the world, balancing power with intentional action. Mountain Lion leads herself and doesn't worry about who follows. And ironically, because of this, sometimes she ends up with a trail of initiates. You are definitely a powerful, innovative Libra, okay? People are going to be following you, okay? And when you doubt your ability and you feel for some reason that you are not like attractive is what I'm picking up with that actor in reverse, okay? That is far from the truth, okay? You have an essence about you that is so calm, cool, collective, innovative, a leader. You are a natural leader and people are going to follow when you step into that leadership role with confidence, right? You are already worthy. Bathe your aura, okay? Just remind yourself all of the time that you are worthy. This is a process for all of us, right? You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. You are a child of God naturally you are worthy and you're here on the planet for a reason she came back to the innocence of the garden throat chakra visudha our connection to the ancients swept clean in this new eon. The soft blue brush of forgiveness dipped into vibrant green, a super lush freshness never before seen. We leave the untrue behind for fungi 
and cosmic stardust to compost. What is beautiful continues to sing through our activated solar plexus. Our cosmology is new. We are children teaching the universe to play fair. Self-validating, wild and unique, beautiful miracles, living and breathing love. We are at the frontier of playful creativity, love made real. Playfulness requires collective courage, me becoming we becoming fun. Letting go of injustices, okay? Being within ourself, having fun again, okay? Having fun again. All right, Libra, this was beautiful. I hope you have a wonderful January and I will see you in February. Take care, bye-bye.